This is the HR9 commuter scooter from Gyroboard. For a price tag of $439 at the time of recording, this, as far as I can tell with my limited experience, is about as good as you can get in an entry-level scooter. It's incredibly solid, has just enough power to get the job done, and has pretty good range for its size. We'll talk all about these details a little bit more throughout the video, but is it Henry approved? Well, let's find out. I'm no scooter expert or enthusiast, and I'm willing to bet that the majority of my audience are not either. And when I was talking about the price tag of the Varla Eagle 1 being a bit excessive to people outside of the hobby, apparently somebody was listening when I said this. However, if you offered an entry-level scooter around $500 to $600, that's definitely something that's more appealing to the audience outside of the scooter market. A lot more of my viewers would probably be interested in a $500 to $600 scooter than they would be a $1,600 scooter. As a matter of fact, not only were they listening, they did me one step further. In the $400 price range, I can't imagine they could get any better than this. Further into the review of the Eagle One, I explained that as an entry-level option, I would have liked to see something that was solid and well-built. We've got that. This thing is like a brick with wheels. It's got pneumatic tires, which do a decent job of soaking up the bumps without using a suspension system. I would like to see something that has decent range. This claims to have 20 to 25 miles. We haven't tested that yet, but so far it feels like it can get pretty close to that. It has a 380 watt motor, which is nothing fantastic. It's just enough to get you over mild inclines, get you around town. That's all we really need for a first time scooter. And quite honestly, this is perfect for walking Henry. Well, in town anyways. Obviously, I'm not going to be taking this on any trails or off-road conditions. That's just not what the scooter is meant for or capable of handling. But the Barla Eagle 1 is a bit big, bulky, and heavy. Although I do occasionally use it to take Henry for walks around town, this is much more suited for that purpose. Full transparency, as always, Gyroboard sent this scooter out to us so we can make some videos on it. We have full creative freedom, and I can tell you have my honest thoughts and opinions. The price range with this scooter's capability is what really has me excited because I always feel guilty when I'm reviewing expensive items, whether I paid for them or not. Some of these things are just hard sales to the majority of my audience, knowing most of us got into the motorized bike hobby because it's budget friendly. Well, this one I actually don't have to feel guilty about because in that $400 price range, this is something that a lot of people can afford and can get good benefits out of. Being that this scooter is only one wheel drive, I appreciate that that motor is in the front tire. When you're going around sharp turns or just cruising slowly through town, it's much more maneuverable and you don't waste as much energy when you need to make a sharp turn on a front wheel drive scooter as you would with a rear wheel drive. It's much more controllable in tight spaces. When it comes to choosing between solid rubber and pneumatic tires, Gyroboard had to make a choice. I think they made the right one, but something you should know. One of the big benefits about these little electric scooters is the trouble-free maintenance. As long as they're charged, you just get on them and go. But if you got a flat tire, all that trouble-free goes out the window until you change it. They do supply you with two extra inner tubes, just in case. Having pneumatic tires means that the ride comfort will be better, especially considering this scooter has no suspension. You'll have more traction over slippery surfaces, and you don't have to worry about flat spotting a pneumatic tire. Solid rubber tires give you the benefit of just not worrying about getting punctures, but that's pretty much it. They don't have as much traction over slippery surfaces, and the ride is a lot more harsh. I think Gyroboard made the right choice, but it's just something to keep in mind. I know in the video my massive feet might look like they barely stay on this scooter, and that's kind of true. It's like standing on a 4x4, but honestly, it doesn't really bother me. It's long enough, that's what matters. My feet aren't scrunched up together, even if one will hang over the edge. Just keep this in mind if you're going through really tight spaces. You don't want to catch your toe on something that might uh, leave a mark. Coming in at about 40 pounds, it's easy enough for pretty much anyone to pick it up and carry it up a flight of stairs, put it in the back of their car, or just take it inside. However, it's heavy enough that you wouldn't want to carry it for a long stretch. I'd say five minutes tops, and then you're going to really start to notice it. 40 pounds is still 40 pounds, but it's a lot easier to move around than the Varla. The limited features of the scooter is not really something I can complain about, given that it's exactly what I asked for in this price range, and it's well built. But there was one issue I noticed right out the box. The rear wheel was making a strange tapping sound. But it went away after about a dozen miles, so I just assume it was the rear drum brake wearing itself in. 
Now, the scooter is overall quiet. Being that this is just a basic scooter, I appreciate that Gyrobor didn't try to get flashy with the design. It's very basic, won't turn any heads, and quite honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm at the age where if I'm riding a scooter around town, I don't really need to draw much attention. As a matter of fact, if simplicity was a contest, this would take the cake. The heads up display is clean and simple. It's easy to read, even in this bright sunlight. The flickering is only a side effect of the camera. It's got a single button. You hold it down to turn it on. You double tap it to turn on the lights. You single tap it to change your speed mode. You hold it back down again and turn it off. On the left side of the handlebars, you have a single brake, which controls the back drum brake and the front regen brake. You have a bell. On the right side, you have a thumb throttle. Well, that's all there is to it. Now, for those brakes, they're not fantastic, but they stop you plenty quick without skidding the tires, no matter how hard you pull them down, which is pretty nice. Though I'm sure if you adjusted the rear drum, you could get it to skid. About those lights, I've tested them at night a few times while walking Henry. The backlight is, it's pretty much useless. It illuminates really dim when you squeeze the brakes, it gets a little bit brighter, but it's definitely nothing that anyone's going to see before they run into you. I would consider putting a light on your backpack like I do with my bikes for added safety. The front light is usable. On a sidewalk at slow speeds, you can see the path in front of you, but it's nothing impressive either. Even though the motor on this thing is nothing powerful, it does reach its top speed of 18 miles an hour pretty quickly. It's on flat ground, it does not like hills. Slight inclines it can deal with, but any regular hills that I would normally go over with the Varla, <laughs> this thing just says nope. Now luckily, the deck on this is a lot lower than the Varla, so it's easy to push if you need to give it a little bit of assistance, which I've done once or twice on some of the steeper hills. Now unfortunately, as a side effect of this scooter simplicity is it's easy to run out of things to talk about. It's an incredibly simple scooter and I like that, but that's, that's it. It does have one notable feature though, and that's cruise control. If you hold the throttle down for 5 seconds in any position under about 15 miles an hour, it'll beep twice and hold that speed, which is actually really convenient and I do use it a lot. It won't do it at full throttle, or at least full speed in the fastest speed mode of 18 miles an hour, but anything around 15 miles an hour or slower, and you can use the cruise control. To turn it off, you just touch the throttle or you touch the brake, and it turns off. It beeps, and the audible warning is loud enough so that you know when it activates and you know when it deactivates. So as much as I appreciate this scooter and wish I could add a bit more to it, due to its simplicity, there's really not much more to say here, so I'll just leave you guys with a little more ride footage of me and Henry just cruising around town. When I'm walking Henry, I put it in the slowest speed mode, and we just go at a gentle pace of about 6 to 7 miles an hour. When I'm by myself, though, I let her rip. <laughs> let her rip straight up to his top speed of 18 miles an hour, which, honestly, on this little scooter, feels great. <laughs> 